It starts already, I think. All right. Yeah. So the, as I already said, there's some new classes, some renamed classes. Uh, and I, I'll start by going over the user facing stuff first, which is probably also the most interesting uh, stuff that we're going to see in the examples and everything. So probably all of you know that we had a base step config before. Um, those are named, now named parameters to avoid confusion with a lot of other settings and configurations that we have. So that's just a minor, minor change. So anytime users want to pass something into a step function, those are now the step parameters. Um, and then we do have settings as well, which I'll, which I'll come to soon. And we have a general step and pipeline configuration, which consists of all of those. So how do we configure a step? Similar to before, we had some configuration options on the step decorator. We had some configuration options on step with return materializer. We had some configuration options on at enable ML flow decorators. Uh, those now all exist in exactly two places. On the step decorator, you can try get some completion here now. Uh, we can specify which experiment tracker is used, which step operator is used, different kind of settings, which uh, Docker configuration, etc. Just quickly. Show you the step decorator here. So, like old options like name and enable cache still exist. Um, we can specify the output uh, artifact types, the output materializers. We have an option to specify extra, which is just a dictionary with any kind of values that the user can uh, use to specify additional information that they want to save for the step and settings, which I'll get to soon. So that is one way to configure a step. Uh, the second way is if you don't want to configure the actual step class, which the step creator does, uh, you can also create an instance and can configure that. And this has exactly the same options as the step decorator that I just showed you. So allows you to set the parameters, allows you to set or activate a step operator, experiment tracker, etc. Um, so like uh, just a mirroring of the things that you can define on the class, you can define on the instance as well. If you want to create, for example, two different instances. Set. And this can be done through a YAML file? I, I get to that, yeah. But all of that can also be done by a YAML file. Um, we do have the same on, on a pipeline level. So the pipeline can also like name and able cache settings and extra, just the dictionary can be defined on, on the pipeline. And you can also define it on the instance by calling the configure method. Then there's one last point is when you want to actually modify any of the configurations on, on a run level. So I have my pipeline, I want to run it twice. I want to run it with different parameters of different settings. Uh, the run method essentially allows you to configure all the stuff that we just seen, plus in addition, it allows you to give a schedule, it allows you to configure a run name, um, and it allows you to do all of those things using a YAML file, which looks like this. This is a method that generates a template of the configuration, and I'm gonna create this YAML file with common without stuff of all the things you can configure which includes also the Docker config, which includes if, your, uh, if some components of your stack support uh, additional settings, like the Qflow orchestrator in this case, the template will include settings for this orchestrator. And same here, you can configure like the materializers used for a step, the artifact type used for a step, all in the YAML file, and the template includes essentially anything you can, you can configure for a pipeline and step configuration, a pipeline and stack. That is it. Yeah, you can just create this template like this. Maybe we can also on the Zenable pipeline add a CLI method for that. Um, and you specify the config YAML simply via this 
why does parameter on the run? Then let's maybe go to settings next. So you might have seen it here uh, on the pipeline. I can specify settings on a step. I can specify settings like uh, configure the experiment name for my Emberflow experiment trailer. Um, so settings is a generic base class and anything that inherits from that can be specified in, in settings here. Not anything actually, but like as long as they are registered in, in, in some place. So we have uh, general settings like Docker, which can be specified uh, on any kind of pipeline or the resources for a step. For example, here, uh, I can specify on a step, uh, no matter the stack. And then we do have additional settings classes, which are specific for one stack component. So my MLflow experiment tracker, Uh, has not only a config, which is like the static configuration written to a file, which uh, assigns the infrastructure or defines how to connect to the infrastructure. We now also have these settings, which are infrastructure independent and allow you to, on a run-by-run -run basis, configure additional stuff for, for my or for the experiment tracker. There's um, a question here. What happens if you, uh, like in the previous file where you had it in the settings, what if you now switch your stack? Will you mm -hmm. get a warning because you passed experiment tracker.ml flow or mm -hmm. will it fail? You get a log message uh, that you passed a uh, configuration for a component that is not in your stack. Um, and we silently ignore it. So stack switching uh, is not really affected by that. So you can have also a weights and biases uh, experiment tracker setting in here and switching between the two, uh, which just use the one which is active at the moment. Awesome. awesome. Um, yes, so stack components can can specify such a settings class for them, and then they can fetch it during, during the run of a step uh, to, for example, set the correct experiment name. I think those are mostly the user facing configurations that we can do. Um, yeah, Alex said it got cancelled. Yeah, not sure any questions. I, so then, I have one question. So, experiment tracker dot ML flow. Mm -hmm. What is after dot? Is it the name of the stack component or is it the flavor? It's the flavor currently. Okay. Like you can change that in one place in code. I decided for the flavor in the end because uh, that makes our examples and stuff much easier because we can, what, like we can also define predefined steps and configure them for the user already. But in that case, we don't know the name of their components which they registered, but we know the name that like a predefined MLflow step will always use an MLflow experiment tracker, and then we can configure it that way. And what if I have? What if I have two uh, step operators of the same flavor in a stack? If I then have only one of them, then can be active, right? If I have a, if I have a, let's say I have a, st a Spark step operator. Mm -hmm. In the first step, I want to deploy to my Spark, which is on GCP, and mm -hmm. on second, I have a Spark which deploys on AWS. Then you can simply specify different settings for each step, right? Okay, makes sense. Okay. Right now, we can't have two step operators anyways, right? Yeah. yeah. But this would make it easier to do that, at least. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe one more, th or two more things, actually, that I that I remembered now. So uh, we previously had this en at enable ML flow, right? Mm -hmm. As how to enable MLflow, uh, that is now by specifying the name of the experiment tracker. So that is how you would select which component is actually active. Mm -hmm. um, this enables MLflow for a step. This enables my step operator called SageMaker for a step. Mm -hmm. And if I then want to additionally configure my MLflow experiment tracker, I would add additional settings. So maybe one more thing about settings. Um, 
some of them make sense to be specified on, on both a pipeline or a step level. We can, for example, take a look at uh, step resources. So let's say all, all steps of my pipeline require uh, two CPUs, let's say. So if I specify that on the pipeline, the setting will apply to all the steps in my pipeline. If I then specify on a single step that that step requires four CPUs, that will override the pipeline level uh, configuration. So we do, we do allow this sort of hierarchy, so the pipeline gets overwritten by a step. Not all of them make sense on, on any level. Like for, for now, we don't build buffer images on a step level because we just build a single one on a pipeline level. So we only allow like the Docker config to be specified on the pipeline. Um, and we also don't pass it down to the steps. Uh, maybe another small detail on that is when you specify, for example, a resource that on the pipeline level, you specify that uh, it needs two CPUs. That would mean that all steps require two CPUs. And now on a single step, you can override that, but you can also specify that this step requires one GPU. And we, like by default, do sort of a smart merging, which would mean that for the step, you now got configured two CPUs from the pipeline level mm -hmm. and one GPU. Wow. And like you can override that on step.configure, for example, to override instead of smartly merging the settings. And that works for, for all settings. So even MLflow, we, we could specify the experiment name on the pipeline level, which specifies it for each step, and then set nested to true or false on the step level and would still keep the experiment name defined on the pipeline. Wow. Interesting. Super clean. That is the settings. And then the hidden stuff behind is that now that we collect all of this in like one central location, we now have a ZML compiler as well, uh, which combines all of these in one, one big class, uh, which is called pipeline deployment right now. That's sort of the intermediate representation, which contains everything. Like, uh, I think now pipeline ID, so also some sense store, uh -huh. concept stack ID, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. This file is now passed around everywhere. Like all the orchestrator step operators don't work with our, I call them sort of user facing front end classes like base step, base pipeline anymore. But instead we compile that to the uh, immutable uh, pedantic object, which gets passed around and that one is used to execute all the steps. And that one is also copied into Docker images. So we don't, we avoid essentially uh, having this huge proto pipeline argument uh, for our Docker image, for our Docker containers and all the orchestrators. But instead the, uh, the intermediate representation is a file in the Docker image, which I can load and just from that recreate the exact state that the pipeline was run with. And then, uh, then run the run the step. Very nice, amazing! What a fantastic job! Good. I have a couple questions quickly, maybe. So the first is, how do I, if I specify the MLflow experiment name, how can I in post execution get that? Do I have get settings? You have on the step environment. Uh, you have uh, all the in run information for that step, which includes the settings, which includes any extra you specify on mm -hmm. the step or on the pipeline level, so you can fetch all that by the step. But I can't have something like, so I can't do something like client dot get pipeline dot get run dot get step. So that's normal, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can't do something like dot experiment tracker dot get you mean for previous runs? Yeah. But we're still figuring that out, but you're going to be able to that's do exactly that. exactly what I'm doing today, basically. Okay. okay. That's like already stored in the MLMD. We just need to expose it in post execution, which I didn't implement it yet, but Felix is working on that. Because once we have that, then that's complete provenance, right? Like you can you can also show that on the UI then, in a way, right? You could, you could 
when you open the ML flow, when you open a pipeline run, you can click on a step and on the right side, you can see the ML flow uh, experiment name and maybe the tracking URI, maybe you can recreate that. So it's all tracked already. Mm -hmm. We just haven't like, I didn't expose it yet in post execution, but Felix is doing that. Yeah, okay, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And, and lastly, um, what is the canonical way of doing this on? What would you want the user to do? Would you want them to do it at the dot configure? Would you want them to do it at the decorator? Because I remember we looked at a few more tools and it's recording right now, I won't say the name. <laughs> so, so, and you didn't like the huge ass decorators, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, we have a huge ass decorator. We do. We do. <laughs> um, so I guess I don't see any canonical way. Like uh, some stuff makes sense on on a step class, something that is absolutely required, right? Like if if my step requires ML flow, for example, or I always want to run it with like a certain configuration option for the orchestrator. Mm -hmm. no, uh, that would I would define that on the class because that should apply to anyone who uses the step class and creates an instance. By default, they should have these settings. Yeah. If it's something that I want to change on a run basis, you would do it in pipeline and run. Mm -hmm. But the overall, like the cleanest way, I think, is just the, yeah. the YAML configuration mm -hmm. because that includes everything, right? For for all the steps, um, you can like it's outside of code, so it's much easier to change for for everyone. So mm -hmm. I guess like the the cleanest way or the one that I would be using is probably and the YAML file. Okay. Cool. Well, it feels like a different product. Well, at least that's more part of it, yeah. Oh, OK. That's great. Any more questions?